Welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes and today we are going to be looking at some worked examples in trigonometry. Okay, so let's look at this first question here which is from the January 2010 paper. Now whenever you are given a question involving triangles you need to determine if you have to use um, the sine ratio, cosine ratio, the tangent ratio or if you have to use the sine rule or the cosine rule or Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so we have a diagram here not drawn to scale. It's a triangle L, L M, N. That's a big triangle here. And they give you some lengths, L, N, and all these things. So you want to calculate the value of X. Okay, so we want to find what this is. Now, we have triangle NKM, which is a right angle triangle, and we have two lengths. They give us two sides of the triangle, all right? And we have no angles here, so therefore, in order to find X, we can simply use Pythagoras' theorem. And Pythagoras' theorem basically says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared where C is the longest side, or the hypotenuse, right? Um, so in this case, the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. So therefore, we can use A as, let's say, 6. So 6 squared plus 8 squared equal X squared. 6, 6 is at 36 plus 64 equal X squared, so 100 is equal to x squared or we can say x squared equal 100 <coughs> therefore x is equal to square root of 100 therefore x is equal to 10 cm right so therefore <coughs> the value of x here is 10 centimeters <coughs> now you want to calculate the value of theta Okay, so in this case we have triangle L, N, K, and this is also a right angle triangle, right? Because if this is 90, then this is also 90. And we have an angle that we want to find. And remember when we have a right angle triangle and we want to figure out which is, which is the opposite, the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The side opposite the angle is the opposite. So this is opposite. Right? The side opposite the right angle is always the hypotenuse. So we have opposite and we have hypotenuse and we want to find the angle, theta. So therefore from our trig ratios, remember so ka toa. Right? So sine is opposite of hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent, uh, adjacent. So in this case we have opposite and we have hypotenuse so therefore we will use the sine ratio. So sine, we set up the formula, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse and we can say that sine theta is opposite which is 6 over 12 so sine theta is equal to 0 0.5 therefore theta is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.5 and therefore theta will be equal to sine inverse 0.5 use a calculator or your three figure table and you get 30 degrees okay so this one was pretty straightforward we had to apply Pythagoras' theorem and we had to use the sine ratio let's look at this question from January 2009 did they, they just change up the numbers really all right so we have a triangle here two triangles side by side and they want to calculate correct the one decimal place the length QS so it's not a right angle triangle, so we have to use either sine rule or cosine rule. We have two sides, 
the 9 and the 12 and the angle between them and we want to find QS so therefore we have to use the cosine rule so we set up the cosine rule we say that um, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a so in this case what is the a? The a is really qs which is what we're trying to find so q s squared is equal to 9 squared plus 12 squared minus put the big brackets 2 by 9 by 12 cos 60 so q s squared is equal to 9 nines are 81 plus 144 minus use the calculator here so 2 by 9 by 12 by cos 60 gives me 108 so this is 108 so therefore q s squared is equal to 81 plus 144 minus 108 and that gives me 117 so therefore q s is equal to square root of 117 and therefore q s is equal to some function square root and that gives me 10.8 so this is 10.8 meters right so we have QS which is 10.8 meters now we want to measure the, the we want to calculate the angle QTS where is QTS QTS is this one which is theta and if you realize it's the exact same question we just did they just change the numbers um, okay so we have an angle that we want to find we know the side opposite we have another angle and the side opposite so therefore we can use the sine rule now so we can set up the sine rule as a over sine a equal b over sine b in which case um, what do we want to find angle right so we can see 10.8 over sine um, theta is equal to b which is 13 over sine 40 degrees all right so from here we could just cross multiply so 13 sine yeah 13 sine theta is equal to 10.8 sine 40 therefore sine theta is equal to 10.8 multiplied by sine 40 all over 13 let me spoke across here now so sine theta is equal to 10.8 multiplied by sine 40 divided by 13 and we get 0 0.534 so you get 0 0.534 therefore theta is equal to sine inverse 0 0.534 so theta is equal to second function sine we get 32.3 so it's 32.3 degrees all right so like I said the question is very similar to the one we just did Okay, so we have another one here. Um, we have a diagram, two triangles side by side. We want to calculate in meters the length of MK. What is MK? Okay, so we know that this triangle is a right angle triangle. Once we have a right angle triangle, we are either using Pythagoras' theorem or one of the trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, or tan. So we want to find MK. We have this angle here, which is 30 degrees. 
So therefore, m k is really the opposite. And we know that k n is 10. So this is the hypotenuse. So therefore, we have to use a sine ratio. So we set up sine theta equal opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore, sine theta is equal to um, mk, which is what we want to find, over hypotenuse, which is 10. And sorry, I should have put the so sine 30 degrees, right? Put the angle one time. So we can write that as sine theta over 1, and then we cross multiply. So mk is equal to 10 multiplied by sine 30 degrees. So therefore, m k is equal to 10 multiplied by sine t, t, and we get 5 meters. Right? Now we want to find the length j k. So we come we want from here to here, which is what we want to find. Right? So, if you look at this, you'll be like, oh, okay, how do we do that? Well, the thing is, you have a triangle L, J, and M, which is a right angle triangle. And we have the hypotenuse, which is 13. We have a side here, which is 5. And we can find J, M, because we just worked out, M. sorry, we can find, yes, J, M, right? Which is from, which is this whole thing here. Right? So that's the first thing we need to do. We can find JM. So we have 13, 5, and we want to find JM. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem there. So let's set up Pythagoras' theorem. C squared equal to A squared plus B squared. Um, or you can write it as A squared plus B squared equal to C squared. Uh, and let's use one of the sides as 5. So 5 squared plus gm, gm squared is equal to c, which is 13 squared. So therefore, gm squared is equal to 13 squared minus 5 squared. So gm squared is equal to 13 squared minus 25. Gives me 144. 144. Therefore, g m is equal to square root of 144. Therefore, g m is equal to 12 meters. So we worked out g m, but they want us to find g k. So g k is equal to g m minus m k. So this will be 12, which is what we just calculated, minus m k, which is 5. Therefore, j k is 7 meters. Right? This was pretty straightforward. Just look at the diagram. All the information is provided. Um, we have another one here, which is from June 1999. So you have two triangles side by side again. And we want to find the length dx. Right? So let's see what we have here. We have triangle d x e they give us the angle of 40 degrees so therefore this is the opposite side which is what we want to calculate the side opposite the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse which is 15 so this is the hypotenuse so therefore we have to use sine ratio so sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so therefore sine 40 degrees is equal to opposite, which is dx over hypotenuse, which is 15. So we could put sine 40 over 1 and cross multiply. So therefore dx is equal to 15 multiplied by sine 40 degrees. Therefore dx is equal to 15 multiply my sine for sorry 15 multiplied by sine 40 and that gives me 9.6 cm so this is 9.6 centimeters 
Right, so we know this is 9.6, right? So that's the answer for the first part. Now they want EDF. Where is EDF? EDF. So we want this angle here. All right, so to get EDF, E, D, F, this angle here is equal to F, D, X plus X, D, E. Right? Are you all seeing that? It's this small angle here plus this other angle here. Right? And that'll give me EDF. So we can find X, D, E. Now X, D, E. We have, the, we know this is 90 degrees, this is 40 degrees. So we can work out X, D, E. That is simply 180 degrees minus 90 plus 40. And this will give me, so it's 180 minus open brackets, 90 plus 40, and that gives me 50 degrees. Because we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, right? So that is essentially what I'm doing there. So therefore, XDE is 50. So we still need to find FDX, FDX. So we have, so we want to find this angle here. And what we have is the adjacent, which is 9.6, and the hypotenuse. So we have to use cosine now. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos, the angle that we want to find is FDX, right? FDX is equal to adjacent which is 9.6 over hypotenuse, which is 10. So cos F D X is equal to 9.6 divided by 10, which is 0 0.96. Therefore, F D X is equal to cos inverse 0 0.96. Therefore, F D x is equal to we're going to use a calculator here so it's second function cos 0.96 and that gives me 16.3 degrees 16.3 degrees so therefore edf will be 16.3 degrees plus 50 right and that will give me 66. Point Three degrees. All right. So typically, all the information is provided in the question. You just need to extract the information when necessary. Well, let's do another example. This is from um, June 2012, and we have two triangles, and they are not right angle triangles, and we want to find the length RS. RS. Where are you? Okay. So we want to find RS. So we have an angle here. We want to find the, the side that is opposite 48. We also have another angle which is 60 and we have the side opposite. So therefore, just by looking at that, <coughs> we know we have to use the sine rule. So A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. A in this case is, um, it's called ARS over sine 48 degrees is equal to B, which is 7 over sine 60 degrees. So at this point here, we can just cross multiply, right? So RS multiply by sine 60 degrees is equal to 7 multiplied by sine 48. Therefore, R s is equal to 7 by sine 
48 over sine 60 degrees so therefore rs is equal to 7 multiplied by sine 48 divided by sine 60 and that gives us 6 point well this would be like 6.0 cm right now the reason why I try to do everything as one calculation I'm trying to avoid wrong of errors right because you would have worked out sine 60 you would have worked out sine 48 and you keep truncating your answer and then your final answer will be slightly off okay so if you can keep everything together and not make a mistake at the end this is better so we have um, RS so RS is 6 cm right now we want to find angle QTS where is QTS QTS is here and we have a triangle and we have all the sides and we want to find an angle so therefore we know we have to use a cosine rule okay so cosine rule is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a right so the angle that we want to find is this one here and the opposite side is the 7 so we will put 7 squared is equal to 8 squared plus 10 squared minus open brackets 2 by 8 by 10 by cos a right, I'll leave it as a for now so this would be 7 7 of 49 is equal to 64 plus 100 minus 8 to the 16 by 10 is 160 so it's minus 160 cos a so carry this term on the left hand side here so we end up with 1 6 160 cos a is equal to 64 plus 100 minus 49 so therefore 160 cos a is equal to 64 plus 100 minus 49 and that gives me 115 therefore cos a is equal to 115 over 160 which is equal to divided by 160 which is equal to 0 0.0.719 so therefore a is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.719 so therefore a is equal to second function cos 44.0 so 44 degrees okay so just pay attention once we have a right angle triangle we can use Pythagoras theorem or sine ratio cosine ratio or tangent ratio um, if we have a triangle in which um, there are no right angle triangles right angles sorry <laughs> we have to use the sine rule or the cosine rule the hardest thing for you will be able to figure out which rule we're supposed to use okay so I will do more examples in another video okay and if you like these videos please subscribe